I like to drink a glass of a small glass of goat milk every night before I go to bed. They're not sure why, but it seems to uh, be helpful in the prevention of diabetes. Again, they are not sure why, so don't take my word on that. I don't like cow milk uh, very much, and um, unless I can get it raw and you know really organic, I'm I'm really not for it. It actually uh, causes a lot of health problems. I'm making some rice pudding today and I learned a method from an old cookbook in Ohio decades ago and I remember it was done usually in a ceramic bowl like the one I have down there I hope you can see that I could use that today but I'm going to use a, a glass baking dish instead now this is broken rice many cultures such as the Senegalese in Africa use broken rice uh, which normally has to be rinsed and soaked a bit before you use it, but I'm just going to uh, use this plain. It's cheaper and it's well adapted to things which have a lot of liquid and sauce and long and slow cooking. I remember my late father in Ohio used to really like uh, a certain rice pudding uh, recipe that I would make. It took hours to make and had to be stirred often. So it was really a labor of love, and I don't know what happened to that cookbook. All the other recipes that I've found for it are just not the same, so I've tried to reconstitute what I remember, and it works pretty well. All I'm going to do is, is I'm not even, I'm kind of a, a sloppy, lazy cook. Now, sometimes you can't do that. Sometimes you really have to make the effort, but this is one beaten egg. I'm going to put in this goat milk. I believe this is a liter of goat milk. It's quite a bit. It'll be okay. Um, I, I'm dead opposed to margarine, but, but when we get it for free with our store credits, uh, uh, you know, I use it. This is made with sunflower oil. Margarine is a very, very unhealthy cooking choice. Uh, you're better off using butter, but my butter is running low, so I'm going to put about two heaping tablespoons of margarine in this. I'm going to put in a dash of cinnamon. It's called cannella in France. A dash of nutmeg, which is called muscat here. If you have a food co-op around you, uh, you can buy a whole nutmeg and get a little nutmeg grater. Oh, that's good stuff. I'm going to add a pinch of sea salt. I'll do that now. Very, very little. French salt is really salty. I, al I always keep a jar of raisins here. Either golden ones, light ones, medium ones. These are medium ones. I'm going to put some in here. They get used a lot in North African cooking, uh, such as the tagine. And... I don't really eat them plain. They're they're pretty high in calories. I'll clean this up here. I've got leek and potato soup going. Yeah. I'm going to add vanilla sugar. This is ordinary granulated sugar with a vanilla bean or two in the bottom, so it has a vanilla flavor. If you don't have that, just use regular sugar and add a little bit of vanilla extract. Now, I've decided to set the oven on a setting for flan tarte, tarte au fruit, uh, which, which means that it's only going to heat from the bottom. And I've selected a low temperature. Uh, it'll be only about 200 degrees Celsius. I'm going to have to keep an eye on this and stir it occasionally. Um, this is called riolet in France. It's rice pudding. And it's very comforting. You can, uh, once it's cooked, put it in, in little little cups or, or whatever, which uh, I don't like to use uh, plastic wrap or foil or anything. I have little saucers I put over things, um, or, or else I will transfer this to a large bowl and uh, put a plate over it. They don't like to keep things really tightly sealed up here, and things such as plastic, those are petroleum products. They're not... They're not good for you.
you know, really, they're not good for you. Foil is not good for you, and so on. So I hope this comes out okay. Um, as far as making it fluffier or something, I'm not going to add any flour or any sort of raising element to this because I think that the single egg will be okay. Um, this this is it looks like a very slipshod recipe, but since I've been making this since I was a girl, I sort of know what I'm doing and I can kind of eyeball it. There's, there goes my nutmeg. I'm just going to put a little cinnamon on here, not too much. Somebody asked me a question about nutmeg. They're not very familiar with it. Americans don't cook with nutmeg very much, which is really a shame. You need it for your soups and your mashed potatoes. Uh, they use it quite a bit in many other cultures, uh, Scandinavian cultures. And actually, um, cinnamon has some genuine health benefits. You know, it's kind of interesting the way uh, a lot of these herbs and spices, besides the fact that they, they taste nice, uh, really have some benefits. You know, ginger is a powerful anti-inflammatory. It's good for the digestion. And I had a friend in New York who was always saying, oh, eat cayenne pepper, it's good for your digestion. But um, peppers and the nightshade family are not good for people who have pain issues. That includes potatoes, tomatoes, zucchini courgette, eggplants, uh, peppers of any type, mild or hot. See, there's my leek and potato soup going there. Um, so... I recommend the uh, the Juicing for Life book, which came out in the 80s, has a very good uh, diet in there called the Elimination Diet. It's it's not expensive to do. It's it's easy. It's it's mostly you eat lamb and apricots and brown rice for a couple of weeks, no coffee or alcohol, and um, some of the stuff was. I just couldn't get it. I didn't have a, a good hippie health health food store around me. But after two weeks on this diet, um, you start to add in other foods that you want and that you have available in your life. And you keep a food diary about how you feel as you're adding in this stuff. And it's a great way to identify food intolerances, well, allergies, you know, uh, allergies you kind of know, but not always, you know. Sometimes in your vitamins and stuff, there's yellow food dye, and in your foods there might be aspartame or food dyes or stuff, and you might have like itching skin or the sniffles or, you know, various uh, unpleasant symptoms. And if you get this stuff out of your life, and then add it back in a little at a time, you can rationally and reasonably find um, what what you shouldn't eat or drink. I have no idea why, but beer makes me sneeze. Uh, coffee makes me sneeze. <laughs> uh, coffee is a purgative. It's, it's not actually very good for us to drink it daily. Um, like tobacco, it has medicinal qualities. But, you know, as a daily beverage, I, I just don't recommend it. It doesn't work for me anyway. So have a good day, everybody. See you soon, I hope. Bye.